Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm going to do part two now on this Penn Spinfisher 704Z. So part one was actually to, to answer a viewer's request about how to fix the bail springs or how to set the bail springs. And uh, we did just that. We've got a slam and bail now. And uh, this reel was purchased uh, from an estate sale. I actually got a pair of these. And it was sitting on the sidelines for a while because I did have a problem with the bail and I've been busy doing other things. And then uh, one of our viewers, Tim, asked uh, could I show him how to set the, the bail springs. There's two of them. There's one on each side. We did that in the, in the video and I figured while we're at it we might as well just go, and go ahead and tune it all. This reel is in beautiful condition. It was an estate sale. I understand that the, the fellow who had passed away was uh, quite an avid fisherman but it hadn't been fishing in quite some time. And... Uh, we worked out a way to uh, to get this thing fishing again. So I start by removing the, the external pieces and parts. And um, when I do that, I like to start also by thanking our first responders and essential personnel, everybody keeping us safe during this pandemic. The first responders include the EMTs and the, uh, hospital workers and our fire and rescue and first aid squads and the like. And, uh, all the essential personnel, our teachers, our, uh, our, our food, food workers, our uh, folks that are in the line of uh, supply chains. Thank you for everything it is that you do. Okay, so we took the handle off. We did that in a, uh, in a uh, clockwise manner, right? I think, yeah, in a clockwise manner. There's a little washer behind there. I like to nest that in the cup so I don't lose it. And I like to put my pieces and parts into a parch tray. I use the bottom of a milk jug. But it's just a place to accumulate all the small pieces and parts like screws and that. And uh, that way, when I go to reinstall the uh, pieces, I know where to look for them. Okay, the handle side is out. You needed to do that to get the main gear out. And on this side, we're going to take the three side plate screws out. And in the other video, I did have this off. I did show how to remove the axle shaft. Because when I do a bail spring reset, I like to take the rotor cup off. That way it... Uh, it's you have more control over it than trying to replace a bail spring while the rotor is going around in circles and the like. So uh, it, you can skip ahead if you watch that video and you just want to find me in the pieces and parts mode. Three screws, take the side plate off. Now this one has got the anti-reverse clicking at the moment. I like to move that anti-reverse to the off position so that when I move the main gear out I don't have a problem. This one has a stud not a screw that it rides on with this crosswind arm but we want to take the axle shaft off at the moment. To do that we're just going to remove the screw that holds the arm into the axle shaft and we'll be able to pull up on the axle shaft to remove that. The screw is out that goes in my parts tray and we can pull up on the uh, axle shaft to remove that. I'm going to leave that right here because we're going to clean that. Then we can take our axle uh, our crosswind arm off and as you can see this wheel is in very good condition. It hasn't been used that much in all these years. The 704 has the spiral gear. Beautiful uh, metal work in this one and to get to the axle, just uh, to the main gear, just push it out. Make sure that this is in the off position. Notice that there's two screws that control, uh, two springs that control this. There is a spring on the dog. You can see one tag end is here. It wraps around the uh, uh, the stud shaft here, and there's a, an arm back here that actually hooks to the top of it. So you need to make sure that that's all set. And then there's another spring down here which controls tension on the, the eccentric lever that's going to move this in and out. So you can see how that operates. And when I do it that way, you can, maybe you can see the tag arm for that spring a little bit better there. Okay. So this, the bottom of the case is very clean, but we want to get to that spiral gear and we want to get to the burring. So in order to do that, we need to remove the rotor cup. I use an offset wrench here. Uh, you can't use a box wrench because of the lip on the cup, but this offset wrench works perfect for that situation. And as soon as I um, get the first of the nut loose, I like to... Uh, just take the rest off by hand then I can remove the rotor and then we have a little kind of a rubber washer thing here there's two studs that are that are holding this on just be careful not to rip it there's actually three there's three studs 
Now this one's important. When you go to take the collar off that's holding the bearing and the pinion shaft, notice the orientation. This is not a, a collar that goes in any particular direction here. This is the ramp. It's the trip lamp for the bale. You can see how it rides up. That's what's going to flip the bale. Notice that it's sitting on the back side of the reel. If you put it off somewhere else, uh, what's going to happen is when you go to flip your bale, it's going to be in a, in a different position, and sometimes that affects the throw of the, uh, of the bale itself. So when you go to reinstall this piece, three screws ramp to the back pointing to the handle. This is a good time to tell you to take pictures. If you're working on a reel and you're not familiar with the reel, then take the pictures. That way you'll know for sure how those orientations of the pieces and parts go. It's also a good time to tell you to go get the schematic for the reel. This is uh, schematic is available on the internet. It's available through mysticparts.com and it'll show you an exploded view of all the pieces that you're taking off so that you know if you get stuck you can go back and reference the schematic and say, oh, that's where that piece goes. Uh, and I use that parts tray because that parts tray is a good organizer. If I have any pieces and parts left in the tray after I think I'm done assembling, well, then I'm not done assembling, and that's a good time to go to your schematic try and figure that out. All right, here's the third one. I'm hoping that the bearing is going to be easy enough to pull out here. Uh, this reel is not showing much evidence of wear or not, so I'm hoping to get lucky here. That's the bearing. This is our spiral gear, and if you pull up, that was a that was a beautiful thing. That doesn't always happen like that. Uh, more times than not, it doesn't happen like that. But in this case, I got lucky. So there you go. With that out, we're going to do a little bit of cleaning. We noticed that we had just a little bit of grease that was hung over in the case there. So let's get that out. And there's just a little bit in the back here that was thrown off by the main gear. Otherwise, that case almost looks brand new as does most of this reel. This reel is in beautiful condition. Uh, it's got monofilament on it. I, you know, I am certainly going to remove that. Uh, but again, I grabbed the reel more to do a, a video on how to do the, the bail. And just figured while I have it here, let's go complete the service on that. And uh, maybe even take a fish. We'll see. Striper season is going to start soon. Maybe uh, we'll try and put some fresh line on it and see how it does with striped bass. All right. This is your uh, bearing. Rides beautifully. I'm going to put a little bit of oil. I'm going to use a fishing reel oil. In this case, it's uh, Lucas's fishing reel oil. And uh, we've cleaned the, uh, the pinion gear or spiral gear off. You can take your fingernail in a, in a cloth and just kind of put it in each groove and slide it down. And that way you can make sure that if there is any old grease in there that it comes out. You could also use a pick like this to just kind of run in there and just make sure that it's all clean. Or you can use a, um, a brush. You can use a brush like this and just come up through the channels. If you do that, put it back in there so that you don't get the dirt and grease on your, your bench. But uh, any of those is acceptable. Make sure you get that cleaned. I'm going to use fishing reel grease now to start the reinstallation. I'm going to use Penn's Precision Reel Grease. Not because it's a pen product that I'm working on, but because it's a fishing wheel grease. And uh, that's what you need to use here. Uh, doesn't make any sense with the grease being inexpensive to go with something like engine grease or the like. General household greases. Just go get a small container of the grease. I have a big container because, well, I work on fishing reels all the time. But uh, get a small container. They sell them in two ounce containers. I think it's less than $10. All right, so we've oiled the bearing. We've greased the spiral gear. We're going to go back into the holder. Remember what I said? You wanted to pay attention to where that ramp was. The ramp points to the back handle. And then I go to my parts tray and find those three little screws. Penn was great about using uh, pieces and parts in multiple reels. And uh, these little screws, I believe, also fit the squitter and the jig master's frames. So if you're panicking because maybe you lost a screw along the way, don't worry. Even though this reel is old, that screw is probably still available. And if you happen to have a parts reel around that was a squitter or a jig master, you can probably take one from the frame 
uh, and use that. The inside frame, the gear side frame. Okay, these are the point where uh, everybody who knows me knows I have a little bit of trouble with small parts. So what I'll do is I'll cut the commercial here. If you like this, then I would encourage you to subscribe. If you do subscribe, I would ask you to hit the notification button. And uh, that way it'll help my channel grow and it'll also help you become aware of the videos that I'm doing. And then you can select which ones you, you like. I work on all kinds of reels. In this case, I guess I'm working on a classic spinning reel. I work on modern day spinning reels. I work on big casters, conventional, trolling, all kinds of reels. And uh, if you're not seeing one that you like here, just wait around and help because most of the stuff that comes into my shop gets videoed. I like to do that just to show the customers how the reel was worked on and let them figure out if they want to do it in the future. Uh, and it's uh, a way for me to pass on what I know uh, to everybody else along the way so that they can do it themselves as well. All right, we're going to do the same thing here that we did with the other one. I'm going to grab a brush in this case. And I'm just going to brush through the channels to make sure that I have all of those gear teeth cleaned. I'm checking for scarring on the main gear here. I don't want to uh, see a, a bent piece. This is a little collar. It's riding on there. I imagine you could take that collar off. This one spinning fine. should just be able to pull it off. Like that. Be careful with those. You lose those and uh, that'll ruin your day. All right, I'm going to get grease onto the face because this is the collar and that swing arm is going to run around. That offset stud there makes that uh, uh, act as a, um, an eccentric. And uh, that'll move your axle shaft up and down, high and low. Now I'm going to take that collar and put that back on. On the back side of this, what we only have the, the sawtooth for the anti-reverse that's why I take that off uh, when I go to service a reel I put it in the off position so that it can easily merge and not uh, get stuck on the way back in so this is in the off position right now just going to go ahead and put that back in if I rotate the, uh, the spiral gear that will pull it in and then in this case though I don't do it much with other reels, I do like to put the handle back on this one to hold that main gear in place. Overall, this is a, a pretty sought after reel. It's certainly high quality, made in the USA. The first spin fishers were introduced in uh, 1961, I believe. Uh, they were the Greenies, and then the, the Z series followed that. And uh, basically, inside they're the same change of paint scheme and some, some minor things. Those three studs, these three, kind of a, an expanding kind of a rubber thing. So you, you sort of have to get it located in that hole and then pull in. It's almost like it has a nail head on it or something, but that's the way that that will seat. We'll come back and we'll put the, the rotor on now. This rotor has a hold fast on it. You'll notice that there's a, two flat sides when you put the hold fast on. That's part one, and then you have to rotate the cup so that it seats in that little indentation and then you push up on the rotor uh, on the spiral gear so that you have the clearance to put the nut on. So hold that spiral gear while you're doing this and uh, let's go put the, the nut back on. And again I like to start these by hand that way when I tighten them I know I'm not cross stripping them. I have to do that first because if you're going to do the, the reel properly, you're going to have to service that bearing, but then you can't install this shaft until the rotor is back on. So we're going to do that. I'm going to check for smoothness just with my fingers. If you felt anything rough in there, whether it's all grease or, or anything, go to a light abrasive like a 4-0 steel wall. Just if you do that, make sure that it's cleaned off. You don't want the uh, the little steel uh, fragments uh, kind of left in the reel there. And then just a light coat of grease on this. If you put too much grease on there, it's going to squeeze out when you, when you insert it here. All right, that goes in. Come down and grab the 
cross wind arm. And again, this reel is in, is in very good condition. It's, there's hardly any cleaning required whatsoever. And uh, we could put we put grease onto the uh, the main gear. You could put a little grease on here where it's going to ride over it. Put that onto the stud. And then just bring the axle shaft in so that the hole in the axle shaft and the hole in the cross wind arm align like that. Once you do that, you grab your screw that holds that two pieces together. Go ahead and put that in. So I like this reel a lot. It's not my favorite of the big reels, but I like it a lot. And it's uh, certainly well made USA, circa 1970s. Here's my side plate next. What you could do now is you can test. Go ahead and give it a throw. Now remember, we have that anti-reverse off, right? So let's go put that on. There you go. Beautiful working reel. Got to tighten the handle up here. That was loose from storage. Just that. Come over on this side. Whoops. See, I got to bring that down now. Some of these spin fishers have screws there, some have studs. This one has a stud. So, so uh, just be aware of that. All right, I'm in my parts tray now. I'm bringing my three pieces, uh, three screws out that belong in the side plate. And uh, we'll kind of get that started. So this is the largest of them. Yeah, most popular, I think, may have been the 700. It was the size below this, and then uh, you had 710s and 712s, which is interesting how uh, the, the sizing really wasn't, you would think that if you had a 700, that would be the biggest, or the smallest, it wasn't. And then you had the 704, and then, then you kind of started walking down, the 710, the 712 was a smaller piece. It's kind of interesting, uh, sometimes you wonder why they numbered them the way they did. All right, so that's the cover on. And then we're just going to go over and do the top side of this while we're at it. That's a beautifully functioning reel. There's not to like about that. We have our cap, and then we have a clip that's holding in the drag washers. And uh, let's see what we got here, if we got the old ones or if they've been replaced. So that little C-clip comes out, you use a little pick to pull that out, that rides in a ridge inside the, uh, the reel. So we have a, um, one more in there, you have a little rubber washer that sits on the bottom, you have a heptagonal washer that's next, and then that's what's going to hold your drag stacks in. We have the modern HT100s in here. That's so they've been uh, worked on. First one is a Teflon one. You don't do anything with that because it's self-lubricating. Next one up would be the round keyed washer. Then we have one of the HT100s. I like to put some, some grease on there, work it in with my gloved hand. Now I don't have access, uh, excess. I've been pretty good on this over time. But if you did have excess, you would want to wipe that off. Next uh, is the hex washer again. One more of the HT100s. Nice and smooth. And then usually you want to line this one up now. That's the last of the round washers. It sits on top. And then that circle washer goes in the groove again. So let's get that in. And just press it down. The only purpose of that circle washer is to hold the drag stack in place. So make sure that you're in the groove there. And that's, no, that's in the groove the right way. Looking for a screwdriver because I want to make sure that the two of the keyed washers are lined up there and will make it easier for, to go back onto the spool. All right, here we go. We're going to just put that on. Look for the sides of the... There we go. You want to make sure that the flat sides line up with your um, ridges on those keyed washers. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. I'm going to take this line off. I, again, I really wasn't planning on doing this reel. 
just so happened that we had that request come in. But I am going to take the line on this reel off. I have no idea if that line was put on three years ago or ten years ago, which you should change your line every year. And that's it. There you go. The Pen 704Z. Just a beautiful black and gold reel. And this one's got that real slam of a bail because we just uh, spent the video showing you how to, to make sure that that one's operating properly. There it is. Big slam. Okay. So again, if you like that, please uh, like it. If you're a first responder, thank you for everything that is that you do. And for everybody, thank you for watching. Please stay safe. Stay listening to the authorities as this pandemic continues. And please stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.